Okay, you're live. You're also, you got a kitchen towel on you. Yes, I know. That's why somebody said to open the show. Oh, that's right. You want to wait for a few minutes to see who comes by yeah. and has some champagne? We got to talk a little bit. We're having year 2.1. 2.1 point what? God. Okay. 2.1. Second, the beginning of the second year, first show. Okay, let me find myself here. There we go. Turn the volume off so it doesn't go. Well, hello, two people. Who are y'all? <laughs> oh, we got four people. I want to see 1,400 people. <laughs> the uh, last week, I mean, this week, it came up on my Facebook feed that uh, it was a year ago we started this. And I'm going to say one thing the weather was a lot more amenable last year than it's it. just been really wet it's wet and it's muggy and it's nasty and you never know it's gonna start raining you know and it's just okay because JC wanted us to be outside and it's like well it's soggy it's just soggy man. it's I don't like really playing, I don't soggy like, out there I don't like playing guitars it's with soggy hey fingers. Susan hey Dave Hubby what's going on my man so here we are uh, beginning of the second year of these shows and you know a lot has changed what? Uh, well, we have 32% of the population of America has been vaccinated, at least one shot. We got our second shot on Monday. I was sick as a dog on Tuesday. Uh, Didi didn't have those kind of uh, reactions. I honestly felt like it was a really, it was like a bad hangover. Like fog brain, <laughs> really, really exhausted. Fog brain, I, yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was like, but, but in terms of, in terms of COVID, and the nightmare stories I've heard about people being sick. It's uh, what we just went through this week is nothing. So nothing. Ma make sure that you uh, let us know when you get vaccinated because it is, I realize that for a lot of people, they don't understand why it's something to celebrate, but I think it is. I think it's, I think it's amazing that they were able to pull this off. And uh, I mean, I, despite, I mean, the people have been working on this for a long time Yeah, and they, they knew, they knew something. If they hadn't known this, uh, this wouldn't have happened. I mean, if they hadn't been working on this uh, particular strain of whatever the hell this flu is, they just had to adapt. 19. It. So, you know, whatever. Uh, it feels Season great. two, no reruns. JC, you're right. I don't know. Actually, oh, shit. I, I don't really know. David doesn't write these down, so I don't actually know if he knows, like, how many times he's done the Candace Sardine or oh, how many yeah, times yeah, I he's. Do. Oh, yeah, I have a whole. Uh, I have a whole book of set lists. Look, here they all are. Look, set list, they're all here. Okay. Set list after set list. Okay. Uh, I started a new moleskin today because I ran out of pages. Um, and also, I wrote down, I watched the video from week one last year, and I only played um, nine songs, maybe it was 10. So that's my, my set list from from last year, which I still have. So I, there is some organization here in my mind. You may think otherwise. <laughs> I know someone sitting in this room might think otherwise. So. Not at all. I'm just sitting here thinking, and when did it, when did it, it blew up to two hours because two hours is what you played the columns, so your head. No, no the reason why it blew up is that we had internet problems. And JC said, just play a little longer once we figured out what you know with the internet's and so oh, it's, it, it, it's JC, jc's not his fault but his <laughs> suggestion so here we go we got we said we'd do this right? yeah we did we said we do it last year but we didn't really think that this year would uh that this would actually come to pass i'll be honest with you i guess i guess with uh, the former administration's ineptitude i realized that it was gonna it was going to be a sticky process, and indeed it has proved to be. However, I'm extraordinarily happy for every American who's gone and, and gotten their shots. So, Michael Burke, that's for you, bro. I see you're out there. He's a, he's a champagne cork collector? Yes, no, but he's, he's going to start being one. Oh, okay, okay. So He's French and doesn't, yeah, there you go, you're doing good. He's French and doesn't know how to pour champagne? But you clearly do. <laughs> I was taught by the best. Yeah, it was like a 17-year-old at Bryson's restaurant. <laughs> hey, Pop. 
Dave, Dave, McCann. Sell Dave McCann. Oh, really? He did sell champagne at that little old bar. Yeah, he sold good champagne at the Milan Lounge. Yeah. Actually, we need to, we need to raise a glass to him. Yeah. So everybody that's here, uh, let's, uh, yeah, Angela, exactly. Get your uh, Chaim. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. It's over here. Get your... Uh, Get you, raise your glasses to what has been, I would imagine, the year from hell. The year, the, the strangest year we've all spent. And uh, it's been great to see you all. You know, Ching Ching across the camera. And uh, it's been great to see you all each Friday. It's been a great help. So, welcome to Amelia Street, the mm -hmm. COVID Courtyard Concerts. Who would have thought? I want to, pre I appreciate everyone coming. I, I used to, I, I noticed, I looked at the first. I've saved all these videos, and most of them I put on YouTube. Well, I didn't start putting on YouTube till probably June. But every video that we've done is saved on, on my Facebook page, except when I was confused and used it on my musician page. So I got, that's whenever I started losing people. <laughs> but I went back and listened and looked, and uh, actually it was quite educational. And I found that everybody was very helpful. We had a a lot of the tragedy at first. My first cousin had yeah. actually passed the week after the, um, St. Patty's Day. That's when we had the, the uh, Bombay gin bottle on the table. What? And so I went through the first three weeks of these, these videos. It's like, wow. And what people were saying because the, the country was in lockdown. So it was a different world back then. It's a different world right now. And I don't know about your states, but here in Louisiana, on, starting on Monday, everybody older than 16 can get a vaccination. So we're very well, you know, going very quickly through this stuff, which is great. I think it's great. Of course, we have a, um, I don't know how our neighbors to the east and west and north are doing, but, you know, you know. We have a, um, a 24 hour Vax Fest <laughs> next week at our little ballpark. Oh, no. We've never had a major league team here, um, and we didn't have minor league for a really long time. And if you, any of you are interested, the magic word racism is the reason why, much to my chagrin, embarrassment, and misery. But we did have, a, for a while there, we had a little minor league team, and uh, the ballpark is adorable. Swimming pools for kids and all sorts of cool stuff. So they're having a Vax Fest. It's 24 hours. That's awesome. And uh, I think that's gonna be cool. I think it's gonna be a cool story to keep your eyes out for because whoever covers it is gonna have a really good time. It's gonna, I mean, if it's New Orleans, it's a party, right? So there's gonna be some interesting, interesting things from there. They do things with style here, are different than that. Nice, JC. Else. Oh yeah, last week I'd been to the doctor and they had to test me to see if I was having a, which what I consider to be the death knell to everything that I love doing, which would have been rheumatoid arthritis. It was an autoimmune disease that you can't do dick about. But uh, it looks, it looks, as of today at 2.30, it looks like it came in negative. So I may still be able to dance at my own funeral, so, oh, which gonna, is good news. We're going to make sure you dance at your own funeral. Yeah. I promise you. Plus, all y'all are invited anyway. It's going to so. be a huge party. It'll be the party we never had when we got married. <laughs> Who you did you did not you flew well, away? Well, because I hated I didn't like any of those people. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what people? Well, did you just announce to a freaking world out there that you hate their guts? Or no, something? no, no. It was a, a certain group of people. And I just want you to know, as a disclaimer, I have no idea. Who's talking no, about. actually, I left town. That's where we That's right. Before. You just left just, town. Anyway, you left town all the time. I was always leaving, so I'm here all the time. Right. And still interested in coming to your town, Butternut, Dee Dee and me, the whole nine yards, and do Thanks. house concerts whenever this, this gets over, over with. Uh, that being said, Beausoleil has a gig, a live gig, an in-person, face-to-face gig. Uh, at least I think we do. It seems like they, they, they knocked it down. It's I did it with somebody, with a promoter, March, May the 9th. So that'd be like the last Sunday of Jazz Fest. We're gonna have a Fado Do in the afternoon from five to seven. Here in New Orleans, if you wanna to come to it, uh, surely you'll be welcome. They can only sell 150 seats. Although people, the promoters are hoping that they can sell more seats. Where is this? At the Broadside Theater on Broad Street. Oh, by the pumping station. The outdoor stage. That's about the only stage you can have with people in it 
because the law changed last week where you can have music in clubs now, but the seats have to be nailed to the floor and you have to be nine feet away from a, from a brass band, which is kind of difficult. That's a long, that's far away. So anyway, we talked, talked about that last week. So anyway, I just want to play some music. But yeah, I'll check it out. The Broadside Theater is a... It's pretty it's cool. A, it's a reused boxing yeah. ring. And... A repurposed. There is a, yeah, and they repurposed it. And with the pandemic, they put a big screen outside. So they show movies outside. And they have all these, these tables you can go sit at. They're all socially distanced. And then someone had the broad idea of putting music on there. So they do that. They've been doing that and have the outdoor dances. While the weather is still good. Uh, JC, is it going to be streamed? I don't think so. Uh, I, if I could figure it out, I would. I would ask our sound guy if we could pop the thing up and put it on the Bosley website. We might. I don't know. We'll see. See. What, I don't know what the sound would sound like, but I'm thinking about it. Hey, what the heck? You could see the guys. We'd be alive. <laughs> that being said, get out your damn kazoos. Wait, that was your whole introduction. That was so short. Okay. We're off our harp to <laughs> what else do I have to Well, say? Jay missed the Beausoleil show. Does that mean the Beausoleil show on for St. Patrick's Day? Well, that, that happened. I don't know if it's... I think Did y'all see David in his giant Guinness hat? It's because if you there. didn't, it's still down here if you want to see his giant... Yeah, it's kind of worth seeing. Yeah, get it out. We'll put it on. We'll put it on. Because if Jay missed the show, he didn't get to see you wear it. The Guinness, the Guinness barmaids gave this to David for some time back. It is now his uh, St. Patrick's Day uniform, and it's it's impressive. It's it's impressive. Where's my sister? My sister's not out there yet. Uh -uh. There you go. It's a pint of Guinness that you can wear on your fucking head. <laughs> I mean, so tour allura allura. It's a little warm. A, but it does look like it. There are few. <laughs> There are few people in the world that look like they were born with it on their heads, and you're one of them. Everybody else just looks distinctly different. Do you look like it's, was, it's supposed to be there? It's comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Rocky. <laughs> you have a different... <laughs> so do stay soft when you get his hat. Everybody, lift the pint. Lift the pint. Enjoy. Have a glass of champagne. I'm on this. But you want me to put that in an ice bucket? Oh, it's up to you. I'll go through the first song with this ridiculous hat on and then the... Yeah, actually I think you should keep it on that. <laughs> yeah, you don't die Guinness, baby. Get the pitch. Okay, well it is. <laughs>
make you happy if you will only say the same. But if you leave me for another, you'll regret it all someday. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when the sky's gray. else dear could come between but now you've left me and you love another you have shattered all my dreams you are my sunshine my only sunshine you make me happy when the skies are gray you'll never know dear It's the Louisiana State song. This is a hot. Yeah, they are warm. It's hard to wear a pint of Guinness on your head. Boy, I'd rather drink a pint of Guinness. Yeah. It's a great. It is a great hat, though. Yeah. You can't. It's just the best. <laughs> it is the best. But we take it that everybody had a good St. Patty's Day. That was last week, right? Yes, that was last week. Yeah. All right. This is Fish Friday down here in New Orleans, where we eat fish for Lent and... It's quite a scene. All the churches, you know, have their, making their plates. And all the famous places that are famous all through the year for seafood are making their plates. They're making their plates. They're making their plates. You want that with potato salad or french fries? And next weekend, is, this is the second to last Friday in Lent, so it, it's building up. I do remember last year I was talking about Casamento's, which is one of my favorite. Well, it's an oyster house, but I like their fried seafood. I wanted to go there and uh, I saw that it had a catfish special for $14. You get a bowl of a cup of gumbo too for $3 extra. They were sold out by four o'clock in the afternoon probably. There was there was no, it was very difficult last year. Most places were closed. It was difficult because you did this. See, if you hadn't done the show, you'd have been out, you'd have gone over there and gotten it sooner. That's true. Mm -hmm. But by seven o'clock, it was done. I mean, they were the done. The, 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 the Venetian blinds were closed. It was done, 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 done. But it's a great, it's a cool way to mark Lent um, because at the end of this, the little the churches don't do their thing anymore. They they're onto something else, probably. Well, you know, I think that some of, some of them do. The Saint Rita's does. Uh, there's a list of the, the churches that do. No, but I mean after Lent. Oh, after Lent, like, nobody does. They, they're, on the, they're on the basketball crawfish yeah. balls or something. It's crawfish. Yeah, 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 crawfish. <laughs> New Orleans and crawfish. Very Which strange. Not, yeah, it's but, kind of weird, but uh, nevertheless. It's, and April's the best month, so it's getting, yeah. the season's getting ready to hit it. So, All right, so like, when I was listening to the show last year, I'm going to play a couple of the songs from the first show. Uh, this was one I started off with. Uh, it's called J'ai fait tout tour de Grand Bois, which means I made a pass in the big woods to go by your house, only to find that your parents sick the dogs after me because I was a bon audience, good for nothing. <laughs>
used to whistle that song. She whistled as well as well learned from her. David's the worst whistler in the world for a musician. I can't whistle. He can't he, he dry air whistles. It's terrible. I can whistle it's but I can't whistle. Irritating. <laughs> My mother was a dry whistler. You never know when you get you know you go from a mom to a boyfriend to a husband and it's just dry whistling the whole all the way through it. I think dry whistling is more common than you think. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Hey, Brooks, how you doing, buddy? This one's called J'ai passé devant ta porte.
marche à la porte de ta maison Quand j'ai vu les gens de la lumière Oh yeah, yeah ça casse mon cœur Tout autour de son cœur J'ai passé devant ta parole J'ai crié ma maille à ma mère That's a sweet song. Of course, the words are kind of weird. I don't know if you know the lyrics, but uh, he's been hacked by um, by the infamous African. Uh... <laughs> now that was just a matter of time before that happened. Wait, I just got hacked. <laughs> yeah, you know. Hey, text text to this number for your five thousand dollar prize. Five. And, yeah, <laughs> you've made the big time. <laughs> You're part of a, of an international, I mean, a, sorry, global sham, scam, whatever the hell it's called. Great. Look at it, it's going to town. Oh, Lord. Yeah, he's after Susan. Yeah, so Susan's getting way late. And also Jay. Oh, there's a connect. That's right, Jay and us. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Lord. That's going to load up your whole uh, Facebook page right there. Uh, uh. <laughs> Stop you know, screen. I've been wondering if this was going to happen. <laughs> I know, right? God, this is so tragic. <laughs> you mean it wasn't supposed to do that? No. Oh, God. I, you know, but I have actually been wondering when it, something would pop up there and say, Hey, David Doucet, I really, you look really cute to me and I like your pose. Please text and whap, 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 whap. And uh, Susan, you mean I wasn't supposed to do that? <laughs> Gotta go buy a new car. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Jace man. picked up his 5K. Great. Well, good. We're all... God, dude, that's just. I just can't see this, but as a really good sign that you've actually been on this fucking thing long enough to where they've decided on your anniversary show to blow in with a scam. That is freaking amazing. I know, right? Penny, where's mine? I don't know. Good question. <laughs> Too funny. Oh, well. You've hit the big time now. I've hit the big time, y'all. I'm excited. Yeah. Let's see here. This is one that uh, uh, I was listening to, uh, trying to rebuild my database in my iTunes and um, downloading and uploading songs and everything on my computer and the iPad and everything. And, this was one that I was listening to the other day. It's a, uh, a song that uh, Beausoleil's never recorded, but the, the Balfour brothers have, uh, they, and uh, some, some other people have too, but I learned this version from the guy I learned a lot of these songs from, Roger Mason, or at least this, this technique of finger picking these Cajun songs. The song is called Tu peux cogner, mais tu peux pas, tu peux cogner, mais tu peux pas rentrer. You can knock, but you can't come in. It's based on the song that most people know, but it's Cajunized, of course. It goes something like this. Tu peux 
cogner, mais tu peux pas rentrer. Tu peux cogner, mais tu peux pas rentrer. J'ai le clé sur la porte côté. Tu peux cogner, mais tu peux pas rentrer. Tu peux cogner, mais tu peux jamais rentrer cher. Tu peux gagner mais tu peux pas rentrer. J'ai les clés sur la porte avant. Tu peux gagner mais tu vas jamais rentrer. Tu peux gagner mais tu vas jamais rentrer. Susan stomps the bleeding. Thank you, Susan. Yeah. Unless they're all gone. <laughs> Everybody went to go get their five. Brooks wants ten. Shoot. <laughs> See, I'm working. I can't get any of it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm surprised you pay when you're the guy on the stage. I made it possible, though. Don't, don't forget <laughs> about <laughs> me. <laughs> if it weren't for me, you wouldn't have that 5,000. This one is, uh, what made me think of this one is this another Balfour Brothers song. Um, this one is called La Vase de Grand Bois. La Vase de Grand Bois, but it's not really called La Vase. That's not really the, the right name for it. But Dewey, uh, when the, Dewey Balfour recorded it, and the Balfours, they call it La Vase de Grand Bois. There's another Vase de Grand Bois that was recorded by Hector Duyon and the Dixie Ramblers, which I did once. Maybe I'll save that for next week. Uh, that's on our Blue album, by the way. But this one we recorded under the title La Vase de Jean Glamont, which means the pensive waltz or the thoughtful waltz. And we learned it from um, a great old time fiddler. Uh, although he had an English name, he dropped the O for the O'Connor, but he didn't speak much English. His mother was very French. Baris O'Connor, Baris Connor was the guy we learned it from. La Vase de Jean Glamont.
which as our second album, we did this, we recorded this on. But I've never heard Mr. Uh, Mr. Connor play it till um, the Louisiana Crossroads, run by Todd Mouton, put out a, an album of um, a CD of all the snippets and little bits and pieces of all the songs that he he did. Uh, it's cool, great fill play, oh, old time. Here we go, La Vaz de Jean Le Mans.
It's a fun song to play too. La vase de jonglement. Une vase qui est très pensive. Il y a quelqu'un, personne qui parle français? <laughs> Peut-être non. <laughs> hey, you better not underestimate your audience. That's true, they all speak French. I'm gonna have a Susan, I can whistle. And in fact, when, I, when I'm on form, there's any number of operatic arias that I can do. I can do Musette's Waltz. I can do Ness and Dorma. Ness and Dorma. <laughs> of course, David can sing it. <laughs> he can also do, what was it that you used to do from Long Boyle? Marcello. Marcello di Arbore. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we can, oh, you're going to get a new canoe tomorrow? Is it a sailing? Cool. David wants a sailing canoe. Who's getting a sailor's con a sailing canoe? JC. Ah. He was hoping that the guy with that the scam artist would drop off the 5K because he needs 400 to buy a canoe. Shoot, the damn scam artist ruins everybody's Canoes life. are so freaking cool. Yeah, do the whole show in French. Everybody's good with it. I'm not sure David's good with it. I say peut-être. He'd have to practice the night day before a little bit. No, tout en français? Why not? He wouldn't hear a lot of speaking. Yeah. <laughs> he can do it, but it, there's, a, there's a lag time when he's out of practice. Just like there is for every anybody. Anybody who doesn't speak a foreign language or at least listen to it every day begins to fall woefully behind. This one is a uh, This one is called uh, The Midland Two Step. It's a song from Amade Ardouin. Uh we recorded this long long time ago. Uh um, I was on the De Beausoleil album, Our Huli, back in 1980, I guess it was, something like that, with Chris Strockowitz. And I've said this story before, it's because of this song that this German, this guy that's uh, on a film crew, they wanted to do something in Louisiana and ran across this album, and they saw Errol Verrett, who was our accordion player at the time, and they decided to, to write a whole script around... Errol wanting to be the member of Beausoleil, you know, Errol was throwing the chain on the on the rig, the oil rig on land and all that, and but he really played accordion at home when he was at home, and he wanted to play with, with Beausoleil, and so the, 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 the finale was he got to play with us with festivals like Acadien and Lafayette. Uh, I've never saw the film. I saw part of it. Actually, that's not true. I did see the film. We actually came to New Orleans one of the times we played at uh, the Maple Leaf and went to the consulate, the French consulate, that had the right uh, Betamax or whatever it was, because you couldn't put a European Betamax oh, yeah, in. Right. And so we, we Which is why the Alliance Française has the two machines. Exactly, okay. and that's where we saw we saw the film and went to the Maple Leaf and played the, the, uh, the show. Oh. That, that was so, because no one in Lafayette had a, had a, had a French Betamax. Oh, that's right. Show. They were a different size or different heads or different. <laughs> Crazy. It's completely nuts. So that was a long time ago. We used uh, to have a. They used to be just right over here on Sexual Yes, Halls. yes. They still might be as far as I know. No, I don't think they're in that building. I think they're down on Morgan Street. Here we go with uh, the Midland Two Step by Amadeo Arduin.
trois quatrains, oh mes parents, oh je connais ça, veut pas mal de voir. Toi, tu fais comment ça fait avec moi? Tu me fais dormir dans la misère que jamais à la song to play. That's a cool tune. Thank you, JC, for asking. Well, we have to figure out is, is there a song that's not fun to play? Oh. Because if you say it's a fun song to play after every one, then we're going to finally get the drift that they're all fun to play when you can play as good as you. I wouldn't the rest of us who are strumming away on our C, F, and G7 chords. <laughs> well, the case in point. That's that, a, that's a, a they're not all different. fun to play, okay? Uh, like what is not fun to play? I, I prefer not to name them. Oh, Ooh, I secrets. could probably name a whole album's worth. Secrets! You see, you never know. No matter how long you know somebody, you never know. So, if you were to do this on the ukulele, all right, you got a harmonica so I can. Yay, ukulele! So, I happen to have the ukulele. I have my left. Le Leonard, Leonard, Ledward Cobb on a thumb pick for that. <laughs> thumb pick on a, oh, that's right. So the song, if you play it with a accordion player, if he has a C accordion, the song will be in the key of C. And it's a three chord song. It's got two parts of the song though but the parts are exactly the same chord-wise. So if you were to play this, I'll play it on the harmonica though. same rhythmically and chordally as the first part.
if you learn those chords, basic chords, C's, your G's, your F's, you probably can play a lot of songs. I know, but what if you don't have your lower cup and a little thumb pick? You don't have to have a thumb pick. <laughs> I think we should have a Cajun show every day and uh, where? Where do you like best in the Hawaiian Islands? You like the Big Island? Do you like like? like I like Honolulu and I like the Big Island. You like the Big Island? I wasn't on Maui. You could have a Cajun show in Waimea in the Waimea Community Radio Station. I actually had a very good time on Lanai, but uh, that's that's weird. Bill Gates's island. It's oh. not how he sold it to somebody else. He sold it to another rich person. What do you what do you? But. I, what do y'all think? Don't you think a Cajun show in Hawaii would be the bee's knees? It might happen. You could have a little, you could have a guest artist. I need some champagne. You're not doing so well, Neil. Well, what I can't this? reach this. <laughs> Come on, here. Take it, please. Seriously. Pretty God. soon my fingers are going to go dead. you in for JC's canoe. My fingers are going to go dead soon if I keep on drinking that. Ah, that's right. Alcohol dead fingers. Uh, this was uh, Fortunately, Jason. I don't have to worry about that. No, you... <laughs> <laughs> I like what you just did. I like, I like, I miss hearing the ukulele. I, do y'all miss listening to the accordion? You haven't played the accordion in weeks, have you? I played last week, I think, but I'm, I can always pick it up. And... You can always check your set list. I was actually looking for the other accordion. Uh... Away. I got it right here. I got I got my other one. This was another one that JC requested. It's called um, it's actually a song I wrote. It's called Le Blues de Root. You wrote a song? Yeah, it's on my uh, solo album, the second one. And I thought of the melody one day. We used to play uh, in Brobridge at a club called, or a restaurant called Mulots for many, many years. And on Thursdays, I, I, I would drive to Brobridge. It was a two hour drive from here. And uh, I'd play a noon lunch set and then uh, go hang out with my folks. And then, uh, then, uh, We'd play the show and then drive back that night, and I did that for a long time until we got fired from the gig because we were never were here. We were on the road, and uh, there was one night I was I was driving, and I hate to say it, but the, there was all these raccoons that were crossing the interstate to go from one side of the swamp to the other one between Gramercy and Laplace, and they were all getting run over, and it was it was disgusting and it was sad, but it, the song came to my to my mind. That's why I call it the Blue de Root because. Yeah, you never can be quite sure when you're driving if it's going to be okay, you know. Uh, you could run into whatever disaster. I didn't write any words to it. it we used quite... to have, the deer used to be the biggest problem, not, not on that stretch. But the raccoons, when the water comes up, there's only one ridge you could get, get on to, to go. And I understand now in Europe they're pulling down ridges so that they can build overpasses That's for cool. animals to cross. But yeah, it was, uh, what would you call that? It was carnage. It really was. It was, it was horrible. So here we go, the blues, their roots.
to lose their root. I think I figured out the. Uh, oh my God! Now John Olivia Oliver is on to you. Well, I think I understand what's going on. Uh -huh. As yeah. I put, uh, when I sell records in the band, I use the Square app, and today I put on the Cash app thing to get me. You know, you could you could send cash via Square, which is called the Cash app, and that's what that's all about. <laughs> I'm taking it off as of tonight. Don't Clearly, worry. it's a portal into hell. I can't believe that. That's really, that's uncool. That's terrible. I'm sorry about that, everybody. Ooh. Okay. I don't, there's nothing I can do about it. But. Goodness gracious. This John Oliver is more tenacious than the other guy. John Oliver, we're going to win. Well, can you block John Oliver from right where you are with your, your mini belt, your mini bag? I think it has to be on that. Dude. I don't think I can do it. It's just sweet desolate, people. Oh, That's terrible. Horrible. Uh, let's see if maybe I can. Let me see here. How do I get there? Um, let me hit the edit button. See if it lets me edit post. There we go. Maybe. Uh, there we go. Let's, let's, let's just erase it. I took it off. Uh, okay. Wow. Bad, 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 John I think, Oliver. I think that's exactly what that was. So anyway. Yeah, it was. Sit, yeah, invites me now to your cash out name for Black. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. exactly what it is. That was a mistake. Oh, Apologize. Great. Please, it's All right. So we're at 6 o'clock, so it's time to move on to the American sector. Man, I'm in this tuning. I just said, dude, uh, a friend of mine, Tom Martino, Tommy Tucker uh, used to, I knew him uh, when he lived in Lafayette in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. And we had a little band together uh, that we played at a club called the Red Dog Saloon. And there was Tommy and me, Raul Bro, Ken Kepler. And we played uh, until they said we were too country or too Cajun, depending on what the owner felt like <laughs> that particular week. Uh, but he sent this song, and I can't remember the name of the damn group. Uh, shoot, the something mud mud rats or whatever. I can't remember what 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 they called it. But uh, it's called John Johanna, and it's kind of a a, a weird weird song. And uh, you remember this one, Dee? Yeah, you lost it in your mini pad meltdown. I got it again. And JC. Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> There's no money, but maybe, maybe uh, who knows? Maybe this is a harbinger of, of things to come. Maybe there'll be money tomorrow. I wouldn't believe. I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't uh, blow I'd my breath. We you know have springs eternal, like spring. Let's get myself in tune here. Um, and I didn't write down the name of the group that, that actually. Grew guy that did it but the, the original person that did this was a guy named Kelly Harrell from Virginia and he recorded this about 1929-1930 but it has a really good line in it uh, it's definitely spring everybody I apologize excuse me the line is gazoon height uh, gazoon height I got as drunk as a boiled owl on my way to Arkansas. So how do you like that's a great line? Yeah, it's a great line. Situation and where I wanted to ride. He 
said, hand me down five dollars, lad, a ticket you shall draw. That'll take you safe by railway to the state of Arkansas. I started out from St. Louis, boys, about half past five. I don't know if I was living half dead, half alive. I brought a quart of whiskey, my misery for to thaw. And I got as drunk as a boiled owl on my way to Arkansas. Starvation was pig pictured on his face. His bread was old corn dodgers, his beef I could not chaw. He charged me 50 cents a day in the state of Arkansas. I got up the very next morning to catch the early train. He says, don't be in a hurry, lad, but I've got some land to drain. You'll get your 50 cents a day and all that you can chaw. You'll find yourself a different lad when you leave old Arkansas. Two inches as tall as any crane. I got so thin on sassafras tea I could not hide behind a straw. You can bet I was a different lad when I left old Arkansas. Farewell, you old corn rabbits, also you Dodger Hills. Likewise, you walk in skeletons, your old sassafras eels. If you ever see my face again, I'll hand you down my paw. I'll be looking through a telescope for the home of Arkansas. I'll be looking through a telescope from home to Arkansas. That's a depressing song, isn't it? I was just thinking, why did you pick it? I don't know. I was just watching a dragonfly way up there settling down on that crepe myrtle, and I was thinking, that is one fucking depressing It song. came up on my mix, and I thought, No, I know, but I mean, I, I don't know. See, you're, you're playing that depressing song. All of them are fun. Apparently, all of them are fun to play, because you're not going to tell us the ones that aren't. So, anyway. <clears throat> all right. We still got John Oliver out here begging for... John, you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Leave us alone, John. Leave us alone, John.
guitar. Let's see if I got something that's not as uh, depressing no, as that. You. No. No. No, it's going to have to be tough. Ah, come uh. on. Nah, I got a good one here. You know, uh, a couple of jazz fest, well, three jazz fests ago, maybe four, Ta Taj Mahal played after Beausoleil. And I've never seen Taj Mahal play, and he, he made a hit out of this song. And there's only one way to play it, and that's just like the way Mississippi John Hurt did it. So, hello, buddy. Got my puppy right there. You have a good puppy. It's called My Creole Bell. No, uh, but then, I mean the other one is, as JC pointed out, it's a you know it's hard not to like that song. It's about that poor man in Arkansas. That poor man in Arkansas. But uh, at the same time, uh, you know you kind of you yeah. don't want things to get too uh, lonesome. No, 
That's why we're going to play another Mississippi John Hearn song. Um, yeah, I'll be sure not to inbox John Oliver. Do not. <laughs> Jesus. I can't believe scam twice in the same day. This one is, uh, uh, I've told the story before, so I'll do the short version. Uh, it's a, uh, the song is called the Spike Drivers Blues, and it, it, when I was learning how to play guitar, it was definitely uh, anything you'd read if you looked up a Sing Out magazine, if you found a, uh, any review of a Doc Watson show or a John Hurt show, that this was the song, you know, this was on the original recordings that John Hurt had done in 1928, 1929. And, uh, put that back and the, the mystique of the song was in the playing, of course, because no one had heard anyone play like John Hurt, really, a blues guy that had this incredible finger-picking style. The, uh, the thing that really caught me when I heard Doc Watson's version, I was probably just about a junior or senior in high school, was his thumb, how you, the, the constancy of the thumb. And to learn how to do this, and I've tried to teach people this, like uh, John Don Baffy can't can't do it because that's not how they see music. That's not how they feel it. They do it a different way. But I'd heard enough of John Hurt and Doc Watson and said, ah, I kind of caught it. And a little bit of Merle Travis, of course, a little bit of Chet Atkins. You got to keep that thumb going, and you got to do it where you can talk, watch TV, talk to people, you know, walk around the house. Spike Drivers Blues, which is basically a one chord song, it does go to the minor, but it's only briefly, is a very good example of a song that John Hurt did in his style of how to play the constant thumb. And in fact, if you listen to Doc Watson's intro on the, uh, head, the live record that they did, him and Merle from 1968, 67, 68, he said, maybe I'll sing this. I'll just play a little harmony. Well, he ends up singing the whole song, but uh, it, it goes like this. Thank you. 
Drummers, use, they do stick control exercises, you know, so they can always get constant pressure, the same pressure. It works, it works that way too. Spike drivers do this. Let's see, I got a couple more left to do. Let's see. Um, there's one that I was messing with and uh, trying to get all those songs that I lost whatever I did this summer to my computer or the fall, whatever it was. Doc Watson was a, a big fan of uh, Tom Paxton. And uh, this is one um, that uh, Doc did. A lot of people have done this one, believe it or not. Uh, it's a very popular song for on the circuit. Um, and it's good for a, a traveling musician because it's kind of like what it's all about. And it's called, I Can't Help But Wonder Where I'm Bound. It's a long and a dusty road it's a hot and a heavy load And the people here I meet ain't always kind Some are bad and some are good Some have done the best they could Yes, some have tried to ease my troubling mind And I can't help but wonder where I'm bound, where I'm bound Can't help but wonder where I'm bound
When you see me passing by, you may sit and you wonder why. And I wish that you were a rambler too. Nail your shoes to the kitchen floor, lace them up and bar the door. Then thank the Lord for the roof that's over you. And I can't help but wonder where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Can't help but wonder where I'm bound. And I had a buddy back. I hear he's out near Frisco Bay And sometimes when I had a few His old voice comes ringing through And I'm going out to see him some old day We need a cheery song. We do need a cheery song. It's really gloomy down here today, everybody. It's like overcast and oh, no. darkish. And it's, it's just a little no, no, we don't need more than that. We don't need artificial. We, don't need that. we need real light, not artificial light. So I thought I'd try one. For Even me. the dog cratered himself. <laughs> Let's see if I can. If this one will work. Uh, this is one that. Uh, uh, it's a High Low Brown song. Isn't that a great name? High Low Brown. There's, a, there's an alias for you, JC. High Low. Yeah, you can say, what is it? Uh, send me your cash app to High Low. High Low uh, was a, a country and western star. It recorded a ton of freaking songs. And uh, you'd see him, if you, if you look on YouTube for the uh, Flat and Scruggs, you look up Earl Flat and... Uh, Lester, F Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs, and those videos of those shows they did, very often Hilo Brown would be, you know, he'd be there playing Earl's guitar and he'd sing a song. This was one of his tunes or a song that he did. Also, Flat and Scruggs did it, as well as the Earls of Lester with Jerry Douglas. They've done this song. Uh, let's see if I can get a, a halt on it. I've never done this one in front of people. Uh, Y'all are people. You're changing your Facebook name right now <laughs> to Hilo, Hilo Crosby. Isn't that an awesome name? And it's H-Y-L-O, I think, is how he spelled it. I don't know. He always wore a plaid jacket, as far as I can tell from looking at the Flat and Scruggs uh, videos. And he had this mouth defect where it was always, you know, he, he was one of those persons that, that talked out the side of his mouth, you know? Like that, I don't know if you've ever known anyone. I don't know if I've ever known anyone. Like I've only seen, you know, who knows what the hell happens in Tennessee. Who knows what, who knows what you've seen. Look at, look at Hilo Brown. Anyway, the song is called The Girl I Love Don't Pay Me No Mind. That might be that other one that I play on. Play harmonica on this, it might not even be necessary. Here we go. Don't pay me no mind 
So good and sweet to me. She used to be all alone with another man. She's done gone. She used to be so good and sweet to me. Well, the girl I love don't pay me no mind. Girl I love don't pay me no mind. Sweetheart. I understand that Pepe Le Pew is uh, involved in some serious business like Mr. Potato Head. Oh, shoot. Yeah, no, I know. I hate that for him. That's not the kind of audience I can't I really see Pepe Le Pew as a, as a rapist because, of course, that was a cat that he was after. So it wasn't really his own species in the first place. So if you're already that confused, it's hard to bring the I would think that's probably letter right. of the law down on old Pepe. He just wanted to ex express his love, you know. <laughs> Wow. Happy Le Pew and Mr. Potato Head are in serious trouble over there at Fox News. I really. They said that Mr. Potato Head without, with, without genitalia, or with genitalia, I'm not sure which way it goes, is in a front. Wow. So. There's stuff happening out there. I know. I got you on Mr. Potato Head one year, didn't I? Yeah. It didn't cause any serious damage, did it? Still happened. <laughs> I don't know if you still have it or not. That was the year that I got you all the toys you never had as a child for Christmas. Mr. Potato, I still have it. <laughs> you made a good day with Potato Head. Ball cap, glasses. That was good. It's my hero. Yeah, it was good. I don't think it caused you any damage. I don't know why. T Tucker Carlson, Carlson Tucker, whatever. I don't know who that is. That's I, I absolutely the reason why you can play guitar. I'll quit those people and I'll do something else. <laughs> I'm gonna play a, a what you call it a uh, Leuven Brothers song and then play an instrument. The Leuven Brothers. The Leuven Brothers. The Leuven Brothers. Is this show politically correct? No, it is not. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so, JC, where do you come down on this whole idea of Mr. Potato Head's genitalia? Do potatoes have genitalia? Well, I suppose biologists would say yeah, right? Or what, zoologists, the botanists? I'm not getting involved in this. 
everything has something. The Mr. Potato Head. It's a potato head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it growing did, potatoes outside the door. It didn't say Mr. Potato Pants, did it? No, it didn't. It's Potato Head. That's right. <laughs> this is a song that the, the Lubins did. They made a huge hit out of this. Um, a lot of people recorded I did it with uh, Brownie Ford. Uh, on his Cowboys Songs album back way back when in the dark ages with the guitar that was stolen from me and uh, which I found but the guy won't give it back to me. Uh, Do these people know this story? I think I've told Do you. Do y'all know I, this I story? I can tell the story real quick. Spatter spot. Yeah, well, David's guitar got stolen out the back of a, a van at, when they were in Tampa Bay, Florida. Checking into a hotel. Checking into a hotel. Years later, it shows up on the Collings list from this, get this, Baptist, no, evangelical. Something like that. He's the uh, it's an evangelical um, he's minister. A Christian. He's not Christian. Well, no, I'm saying he's a Christian. So, yeah, uh, we played this gig. Well, you don't have to go backwards. Now you have to go forward. Okay, so in the, the present guy. time, Collins, twenty years later, on the Collins guitar Facebook. I noticed app, this right? guy was showing this guitar, and it was a Collins guitar. I play Collins guitars. I played them since 1987 or six, and uh, I know my serial number two fifty three. And uh, this guy says, look, man, I have this beautiful guitar. It's Collins 253. Uh, and someone had asked him, man, what does it sound like? Actually, it's not that beautiful anymore. Well, that's, yeah, that's no, it needs help. It's a, actually, a drug addict wandered into his freaking church and uh, needed help. And traded it. And the guy took his Collins for, what was it, two electric guitars? No, it was a like Taylor. They traded well, for that, Taylor. But they're anyway, they're not going to care so much about the brand name as you, but nevertheless. But I found the guitar, and, and, and the guy was writing about it. So we just assumed, of course, that when David goes, oh my God, that's my guitar. It was stolen from me 20 years ago. And I had the police report still. That this cat would freaking go, oh, David, man, I have your guitar. Come get it, or at least something like that. But no, the guy's wife, had, after a long conversation with his Wife, wife, decided what David that I that I I didn't I didn't. It wasn't stolen goods. It was his guitar. It was 20, 20 years later. So I called the police, the Tampa police. We had a long conversation. They sent me another copy of the police report, and the guy said, "Well, there's nothing you can do, except that if he tries to sell it, we'll arrest him. You can't. You can you can purchase. I mean, you know." You can barter. But you can't sell a, a, a stolen item, so I'm screwed. It was a wonderful guitar. I recorded probably six or seven albums with it, and it, it's got a lot of sentimental value, but it's also the, a guitar that was actually made by <laughs> Bill Collings, and uh, it was, at the time, the most expensive guitar I'd ever owned, and I thought it was so cool, and I did not have insurance with it because I wasn't even in the musician's union at the time. And the guy misunderstood me and thought I was in the union and I had insurance, and I said, no, I don't have insurance. And he says, no, my lawyer says I can't, you know, you don't, you don't have any right to the guitar. And I had the police report and everything. So I cursed him out and I, I you know, I said, you know, enough of that. And if I ever go to Tampa, well, I had, I had a student once in class who would, uh, who said he had some friends in Tampa that could help me out. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 that's okay. Also, our nephew, Matthew Duce, is from the Louisiana Sheriff's Department. And he was like, let's just go get the damn thing. But David, JC, I don't know. Is this the one in the ad? Is there something that's... No. no you're talking about the ad on the... Also, the guy's completely dropped out of the, out yeah, of the Collins Facebook yeah, page. He, <laughs> he stole my guitar. So he, anyway, the guy that actually stole it was some... I apparently tried to hock it. It didn't work. He used it as a baseball bat. They played it on the beach. It yeah. was beat up because... Yeah. To, to end the story, I'd actually called up my friend who works at Collins, the general manager... And I asked him about it with the serial number. He looked it up. Oh, yeah, that was this guitar for this dude. And I said, I said that was the first guitar that Bill had, had built for me. And I said, what was the matter with it? And he went through all the things. It looked like it had been used as a baseball bat, the binding. And oh, no, it, it. Was, it, was, it was rough going. But, I mean, it had been, it'd been mm -hmm. beat up. But that's not the point. The point is, it's David's guitar, and the guy's not giving it back. And he's after talking to his wife. But anyway, um... Yeah, maybe he'll take it on Southwest and he'll just destroy it. There's always that possibility. But anyway, now you have the story. So there you go. Which but I can't remember why it, it was. It had nothing to do with it. It did, actually. Oh, I recorded the song ah, on that there guitar it is. There it is. with Brownie Ford. 
Which is uh, the Lubin Brothers song. Isn't Allison. that a sad story, though, everybody? No, That's no, a sad I story. I still think about it all the time. It makes me so sad. And I listen to the, some of the records that I did. My first solo album, I listened to that a guitar, and I miss it. It's got it had a very unique sound. It wasn't a great guitar, but it was mine. Still is mine. <laughs> Curses on that asshole. Yeah, curses on that asshole. There we go. I don't believe you've met my baby. Alison Krauss did this one. A lot slower. Last night, my dear, the rain was falling. I went to bed so sad and blue. Then I had a dream of you. I dreamed I was strolling in the evening underneath the harvest moon. I was thinking about you. And then you met me in the moonlight. The stars were shining in your eyes. But another was there too. There's a great solo in the middle. It's either by Chet Atkins or Paul Yandel, and it is mind blowing. It's that good. I want to thank y'all all for listening. I'm going to finish. Wait, you you got, have to say, we got I always to himself. Well, yeah, we just want to make sure everybody knows that we're thinking about everybody in uh, Colorado and everybody in Georgia. We're, right, we're terribly sorry that there's. <clears throat> that we're under this minority rule situation and that the people that are advancing these these weapons uh, are also now in Congress, which is a difficult thing to deal with because the two most vocal ones, um, Bovard and Trader Green, are in the states that have just been waylaid. We also want to say about this Asian American Pacific Islander thing, if you see anybody... <laughs> becoming harassed or frightened, uh, y'all be sure and uh, keep an eye out. I, both David and I were completely taken aback by this. We had no idea. We knew that there could not be anything good with the former administration saying China, however you said China. China. China saying it all. We knew that no good could come from it, but we also didn't know that this was an organized um, situation in which they these people hate these people. Uh, we both have great friends, um, as you do too. Um, we had to fight this battle after the Vietnam War when the, um, the U.S. government uh, replaced a lot of displaced, how do you say it? The ref Vietnamese refugees along the Gulf Coast because they could fish. And, uh, and we had to fight some pretty intense battles. I can tell you that two generations later, 
these people are uh, these people are our friends, our neighbors. Uh, David and I weren't old enough to, to be in, in, involved in this. If you do want to look it up for historical reasons, um, there was an actual battle in Galveston. Um, I, I'm not, yeah, um, but I had I just want y'all to know that uh, apparently this thing is more organized than, than than we definitely knew. We want to send a big hug out to Susan Horowitz, whose children are Asian American, and and to let her know that we're here for her if she needs. From Bennett and Becca, who are both living, or were, who are both living on the mainland. So please keep an eye out. I didn't know about this. There's a shit ton of hate in this country, and it seems like every time we kick over a rock, another spider runs out. So do be careful. JC, you know what? I don't know what church, what church was that guy in that still, that took your, your stolen guitar? But it, it was like some kind of... Church of the Lord number 12. I don't remember. You know, one of those fucking things, I think. That was about three years ago. But if we ever find out, JC will let you know, unless I'll go down there and <laughs> go see him. <laughs> I think he'd be surprised. I think he'd be, I think he'd be interested in a whole bunch of Cajuns and a shrimp boat captain showing up. So, I anyway. only hold two grudges in my life, and one was the guy that threw the beer can at me while I was playing music. Once beer bottle. Beer bottle on stage. But the other was this this guy in Florida because you know he was going to do it give me this guitar and then he changed his mind but you know like I told him I said that's a very Christian thing you're doing but thank you all for listening <laughs> uh, it's been fun putting together the show thank you JC I had a really good time uh, thinking of these songs uh, didn't play them all which was probably good talked a lot and you know y'all be careful we'll all be careful <laughs> And we'll be here next week, uh, God willing, and we're going to do another show. Send in your requests. Be kind to the tip jar. Forget about the cash app, okay? Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so John Oliver, I'm going to John kick Oliver's his ass. John Oliver's an ass. <laughs> uh, and go get your shots. That's a good thing. You know, I lived. Tuesday was touch and go, but I, I feel great today. You know, it's kind of weird when they... Rearrange your RNA. I understand. That's what I was asking Dee. <laughs> but I don't want to catch this damn disease, especially now. You know, it's like it's the, there's no reason to. Anyway, thank y'all for listening. This, thank you all. This last song is and called. Thanks for the celebration. Are y'all sure you don't want some more champagne? Oh wait, I'll take it. I'll have some more champagne. Dude. Thank you, David. I this, appreciate that. This one is called La Vaz de Cajun. And maybe next week I'll explain the story of why I play the harmonica the way I do. And, and somebody <laughs> said. I keep on wanting to do it because it's it's a really cool dude, and uh, it gave me a lot of ideas. Rodney Balfour played harmonica, but there was a guy Isam Fontano who actually played all these songs and uh, more. And and I, when I look at his his videos, YouTube videos, he's been dead for 20, 30 years. He really entertained people playing harmonica all the time, and I, I enjoy playing it. So La Vaz de Cajun. This was a song that actually is not the name of it. I just didn't know the name of it when I recorded it. I think it's called the Midnight Waltz, but I'm not absolutely certain. And thank y'all.
right, y'all. Have a great weekend. See y'all next Friday. We'll talk to you next Friday. And let us know if you get your shots. So have a good week.